This is video number one for Math 107 for homework over Chapter 6 on conic sections. So we start off with circles, and to do this problem you have to remember the equation for a circle. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. The h and the k are the center. This is the x, h is the x value at the center, k is the y value at the center of the circle, and obviously r is the radius. So when you look at this first equation, what is the center? Okay, actually it's zero, zero. People get mixed up on this, they say, well, you know. But if I have h as zero, then x minus zero squared is the same as x squared. So when there's nothing after here, it means it was zero, and so that value of h is zero, the value of k is zero, the center of the circle is zero, zero, it's centered on the origin. How about this one? There's the center there. Okay, so I have one center at zero, zero, and I have another center at a hundred. And a hundred, pen's not writing. Now this term is the radius squared. To find the actual radius here, you have to take the square root, which will give you a 50, right? And you have to take the square root of the 900 and get 30. Now, here's how you can do the problem. You've got three cases. Uh, can I show them on the same graph, maybe? Okay, you have one circle, broadcast radius, that's right at the center because its center is zero, zero, right? And then you have another one, let's give it, say green one, it's over here at 100 and 100, but there's three cases. In one case, these circles don't even touch, so there's no overlap in the broadcast region. Let's try another one. Um, let me make that one blue. Okay, in this case, the circles overlap. All right. And in the third case, they would just barely touch. And I'll show you what those um, would mean in terms of math. I have to get a different color here so that we can... All right, it's going to be a yellow one. Let's see if I can do this one right. Okay, so we have three cases. The broadcast range don't... They don't overlap. That would be this one. So here's a no. In this case, they overlap. It's a yes. And in this case, they just, they're just touching. So next to each other. Okay. So that can translate into looking at the distance. So here's the math that we need. I need the center here, which is zero, zero. I need the center here, which is 100, and I know this first radius is 50, I know the second radius is 30, and now I try to figure out what's the distance between the centers, that's easy enough, well, I can do it, I can take the square root. So it would be 100 minus 0, because that's the distance between the centers in x, plus 100 squared, 100 minus 0 squared, and you can work that out. Then you compare this distance to R1 and R2. Is it less than, equal to, or greater than R1 plus R2? And that will give you your, your answer as to whether they overlap. Okay, this is the same problem again, except the first station, the one at the origin, has boosted its power to 9,000. Be sure to take the square root using the calculator for that. Okay, I'm going to draw these three cases again, so maybe you can kind of see what's going on here better. I'm going to draw three sets of axes. Here's one. Uh, two and three. All right. Because we have three cases. And I'll get the circles. Let's say the circle in the center, this yellow one. hope you can kind of see that. Man, that was supposed to be... Uh, how could someone mess up? even graphics when they give you all the tools, but I guess
Yes, I'm capable of that. All right, now here's going to be my three scenarios. In this case, they don't touch at all. Okay. And in this case, they just touch, barely touch. Okay. And in the third case, they overlap. Okay. Now if I look at the distance between the centers, I'm going to go from here to here, here to here, and from here to here, those things really overlap. Then I can compare the distance be to the radiuses. So let me mark the radiuses on here. Let's see, from here to here is radius 1. Here is radius 2. So in this case, the distance is greater than R1 plus R2 because that distance included, you had the first broadcast region, then you have a, some dead space, and then the second one. And that made the distance greater than the sum. Now in this case, here's, dis here's R1, here's R2, and it's exactly equal. And in the second case, the distance is less than R1 plus R2. Here's another radio problem. So you have a broadcast range. Here's the main station right here. Remembering that equation, what is the center of this? Obviously it's 0, 0, and you'd have to take the square root of 1600, which is 40, to find its broadcast range. That will give you a circle centered on 0, 0 with a radius of 40. Right. Now somewhere along the line, they install this transmitter tower okay, translator tower that gives it some energy and sends out another one. Uh, so the first thing you have to do, this isn't given in a really nice form. This is obviously a circle, but this has other possibilities. So you've got to look at this and figure out what it is. If you remember the general equation for these, um, these conic sections is ax squared plus bxy, which we're skipping, all right, we're saying b is 0, all that does is move things around. cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f. This is the standard form. That's an e over there. All right. Now, the kind of conic section you're going to get depends on a and c. All right. If a is equal to c, you get a circle. And you, you remember there's other cases. If a is 0, or c is 0, it's a parabola. If a is not equal to c, but the signs are the same, hmm. okay. this is an ellipse, and if the sign of a and c are different, and they're not zero, okay, and they can't be zero. Seems to be running out of virtual ink here. Okay. Then it's a hyperbola. So you have these cases. We'll see this again. So when you look up here and you say the coefficient of a is 1, the coefficient of x squared is 1, the coefficient of y squared is 1, so in that case a equals 1, c equals 1, it's a circle. Now completing the square is how you get from that standard equation into the graphing friendly ones. So let's go through that a little bit. So to complete the square, I've got a minus 70 here, put that constant on the other side. First that looks like scary because you say, oh, the radius can't be negative, but you're not done yet. Now you don't have to do anything to the x squared because there's no x. The only thing you have to complete the square on is the y. So the procedure for completing the square is you take this term right here, okay, and you divide it by 2. So minus 70 divided by 2 gives you negative 35. All right? Then you square that negative 35, so I have minus 35 squared, which will be a positive number, and you add that to both sides. So you get something like this, x squared, oops, I want to change this, y squared minus 70y plus 35 squared, I'll just write it like that, you can work that out, minus 600 plus this 
It doesn't matter about the sine because the square is going to take care of that. Okay, this will be a positive number over here, and this turns out to be x squared plus the perfect square, y minus 35 squared, equals whatever you get over here. Now what do you have? You can find the location because now it's in the graphing-friendly form for a circle. Remember the form for the circle is x minus h squared, well obviously h is 0, y minus k squared, k is 35, and now you can locate that on the graph. Oh, now this tells you you've got, you're have got you working with a parabola. Here's the equation for it. Okay, the general equation for an up and down parabola is 4p times y. Okay, The sine of p tells you which way the parabola is facing. If p is positive, it's an upgoing parabola. If p is less than 0, the parabola is doing this. So from that, you should be able to figure something out about this solar cooker. Now let's also look at what the meaning is of the, of the p. Right? It is a distance from the vertex of the parabola to the focus. Okay, that distance right there is p. So from the vertex to the focus, that distance is p. So once you isolate p, you know where the focus is. And if you remember the reflecting properties of a parabola, anything that comes in bounces to the focus. Obviously that has some importance for cooking. Here's some more parabolas, and we just talked about that. You can look up the equations, so which one's going to go up and down, and which goes sideways.